here hkl is equal to 3 to 1 here hkl here you can see that hkl is the miller indices which represents 3 to 1 where interatomic spacing is 4.12 angstrom if we want to convert this angstrom into meter it will be 4.12 into 10 raise to minus 10 meter that means one angstrom represents 10 raise to minus 10 meter so we are multiplying it with 10 raise to minus 10 meter so 4.12 angstrom is equal to 4.12 into 10 raise to minus 10 meter here you are seeing the equation d is equal to a upon under root h square plus k square plus l square my dear friends this is the equation to found out the interatomic distance. Here D represents the interatomic distance which is equal to A. Here A is the interatomic spacing. A represents the interatomic spacing upon under root H square plus K square plus L square represents the Miller indice. When we are substituting the values that is a that is equal to 4.12 into 10 raise to minus 12 in the denominator it will be 3 square plus 2 square plus 1 square it will become under root 14 so by dividing it and solving this equation we are getting the value of d which is equal to 1.1011 into 10 raise to minus 10 meter or 1.1 0 double 1 angstrom so 1.10 double 1 angstrom is the interatomic distance of simple cubic lattice so this is the simplest equation through which you can solve through which you can solve the problem of crystal structure now Going towards the next question, define Miller indices, explain the procedure for finding Miller indices of a plane. First of all, we will define what is Miller indices. In the above sum, we just calculated the interatomic distance where H, K and L were Miller indices representing a plane. My dear friends, now we are going to just know that how we can calculate or how we can get or how we can obtain the Miller indices. Miller indices are the set of numbers which, in which indicates a concerned plane. Miller introduced a set of three numbers to designate a plane in a crystal. This set of three numbers is known as Miller indices or Miller index of the concerned plane. The reciprocal of the intercepts made by the plane along the crystallographic axis which are reduced to smallest numbers. There are some steps which is given in our slide that how we can found the Miller indice for a particular plane. Here in our next slide, you can observe that there is a plane, a yellow plane of a crystal is shown according to the axis. This yellow plane represents the three digits that is on x axis it is 3, on y axis it is 3 and on z axis it is 2. That means these are the numeric values of the axis. Whereas the distance from its origin, whereas the distance from its origin, it is its intercepts. That is A1 intercept is 2, A2 intercept is 3, and A3 in intercept is 3. But 
we are taking different intercept accordingly to calculate how we can measure the miller indice so in our next slide we will take an another example that if the intercept values are different then how we can get the values of miller indice so let us move towards the next slide here you can see the reciprocal values 1 upon 2 1 upon 3 and 1 upon 3 hence miller indices are 3 2 2 and are depicted by hkl which is which is equal to 3 2 2 this slide represents the direct miller indices 3 2 2 now we want to know that how this 3 2 2 are getting so there are some steps through which we will take an example and calculate the miller indices here the procedure for finding miller indices of a plane are according to step 1 what we will do that find the intercept of the plane abc along the three axis x y and z so from the origin let it be oa ob and oc express the intercept in terms of multiple of axial length that is as we said in the previous slide a1 a2 and a3 here it is pa qb and rc that means oa will be equal to pua pa ob is equal to qb and oc is equal to rc here p q and r the numeric values of the axis that is p is equal to 1 q is equal to 2 and r is equal to 3 that means 1 2 and 3 are the intercept of this a b and c plane so this is the first step how oa is to ob is to oc is equal to pa is to qb is to rc by substituting the values of p q and r it will become 1a is to 2b is to 3c therefore intercept along the axis r so these are the intercepts of the axis for x axis it could be 1a for y axis it could be 2b and for z axis it could be 3c so we are taking this as an example to know the miller indices here for this plane these are the example that 1a 2b and 3c are the intercept for example moving toward the next step find the reciprocal of the numerical intercept value this is the second step where p q and r are the intercept and we are taking it its reciprocal if p then p's reciprocal will be 1 upon p if q q's reciprocal will be 1 upon q and if r r's reciprocal will be 1 upon r that means 1 upon 1 1 upon 2 and 1 upon 3 are the reciprocal of the intercepts or interceptual values on the axis so p q and r are the interceptual values and the second step is to convert this uh, interceptual values in its reciprocal values that is if p is 1 then its reciprocal will be 1 upon 1 if q is 2 then its reciprocal will be 1 upon 2 and if r then if r is equal to 3 then its reciprocal will be 1 upon 3 so knowing the intercepts we are finding out its reciprocal and through the reciprocal we are just taking its lcm convert the reciprocal into whole numbers by multiplying with each with their least common multiple that is lcm so first of all know the intercepts converts in convert it into reciprocal and then take the lcm of that and multiply it with the lcm value so here for 1 2 and 3 the lcm is 6 and mul by multiplying it with its reciprocal we will get 6 3 and 2 so the third step is multiply the lcm with the reciprocals and convert it into the whole numbers 
by multiplying we get a particular value 6 3 and 2 so this is the last step here you can see that h in the bracket h k and l represents the miller indice and miller indice is equal to 6 3 and 2 my dear friends in our previous step we already show that we converted the reciprocal by multiplying with multiplying it with the lcm and converted into the whole number and this 6 3 and 2 are the miller indices of the particular plane that means h is to k is to l is equal to 1 upon p is to 1 upon q is to 1 upon r so this is the way through which you can know the miller indices of a particular plane given in an coordinate let us go to next slide we are moving to our next question that is question 3b describe the quantum mechanical treatment of free electron theory to explain electrical conductivity this question is asked for 7 marks in which there are some points through which a quantum mechanical treatment of free electron theory is discussed which explains the electrical conductivity so actually there are two types of theories one is classical free electron theory and another is quantum free electron theory due to the limitations of classical free the theory Arnold Sommerfields proposed a new theory called quantum free electron theory and for proposing this theory he proposed some points and assume that these are some of the points through which you can cal calculate the quantum free theory in this quantum free the electron theory electron is tre treated as wave using fermi dirac statistics so in classical theory this was the limitation but in quantum theory free electron theory electron is treated as wave taking the second point these electrons are assumed to perform or obey Pauli's exclusion principle that means to stay in orbit for an electron they should follow some particular principle and each and every electron is assumed to perform or obey Pauli's exclusion principle going to the next point these are the main assumptions made by Sommerfield to derive quantum free electron theory for the treatment the energy level of conduction electron are quantized this is the first point second the distribution of electron in various energy level occurs as per Pauli's exclusion principle third point the electrons are assumed to possess wave nature that means these are the three points which makes the assumption let us move towards the next slide the free electron are assumed to obey Fermi Dirac statistics now here there is a note where except the above modification Sommerfield kept the assumption of classical free electron theory applicable in free quantum free electron theory also that means Sommerfield theory or quantum free electron theory both are same we can also name it as Sommerfield theory Sommerfield added that classical free some points or some assumptions of classical free electron theory are also applicable for quantum free electron theory so accordingly we are going to the fifth point the electrons are free to move inside the metal but confined to stay within the boundaries going toward the next point the potential energy of electron and is uniform or constant inside the metal that means potential energy of the el electron is uniform or constant inside the metal the attraction between the electron and the lattice ion and the repulsion between the electron themselves are ignored and hence from the above assumptions 
provides the explanation for electrical conductivity that how an electron should behave during the electrical conductivity according to the quantum free electron theory so this was the question for quantum free electron theory how it was asked that it was asked for 7 marks in june july 2011 these are some of the points or if i say these are the seven points or eight points which should be written to achieve seven marks in this ex in this question let us move towards the next question this is the last numerical which was asked in this exam and this question is oftenly asked nowadays this is one of the question or numerical which is asked from a from chapter optical fiber let us first of all read the question a silica optical fiber has a core of refractive index 1.55 and a cladding of refractive index 1.47 determine the critical angle of the at the core and cladding interface the numerical aperture for the fiber and the acceptance angle in the air for the fiber so here there is a optical fiber having core and cladding the refractive index of core is 1.55 and for cladding is 1.47 here always note that the refractive index of core is always greater than that of the cladding because there is one condition that for total to achieve the total internal reflection the refractive index of core must be greater than that of the cladding so there are two values given one is 1.55 that is the refractive index of core and 1.47 that is the refractive index of cladding first of all we will find the critical angle then we will find the numerical aperture and then the acceptance angle mostly 12 to 14 marks numerical are asked in most papers so it is considered 